All right, hello students. Um, this week, uh, um, if you've been following the lecture notes, uh, we've been uh, going over Android malware, um, specifically to cover uh, mobile malware analysis. Um, uh, you know, one of the um, key things to keep in mind with this, um, and one of the reasons why I have it scheduled after the uh, Java um, lessons was uh, because a lot of the contents here are derived from uh, Java. So, um, you know, there's a number of tools here that we're going to go over. Um, I have a few and a couple that we aren't. Um, so for this particular lecture, um, we'll talk about these two. We'll do some basic static analysis um, and then also um, go into the Android uh, APK file format a little bit. So one of the key things to remember for this is that the APK file format um, is a zip file. So just like jar, uh, in fact, uh, APK is a further extension of the jar uh, subset of the zip file formats. Um, it still contains the uh, manifest.mf, um, works uh, very similarly. Uh, to what you've seen in the jar files. Um, but then also there can be some other files in there. So um, I think uh, one of the applications we'll look at today has some version information files in the uh, meta -inf folder as well. Um, a, a big um, difference uh, between Android and the jar files is that uh, while the jar files had a bunch of uh, start class files, um, for every single one of the classes that are inside the jar file. Android files pack most of the classes into a file that's called classes.dex. So they put it into a, a dex file format. Um, <clears throat> uh, sometimes, um, for whatever reason, um, maybe the files are really large and they want to break it up, or... Um, maybe there's additional functionality that needs to be compartmentalized in different class files. Um, I've seen applications that may have two, three, or four um, classes.dex files in it, so that's something to be aware of. Um, in addition to that, um, there are some properties files uh, that store configuration parameters uh, for the frameworks that are used by the app and other purposes like that. Likewise, there's a standard res directory that contains a bunch of static resources that are packaged with it, but for whatever reason aren't bundled into one of the binary um, packages. And then there's a file called resources.arsc, which is a bundle of uh, many different resources, very similar to how the classes.dex uh, bundles a whole bunch of the class objects. So I'm not going to dive into iOS applications, mainly because of the lack of availability of um, a lot of free and open source tools for doing iOS malware analysis. A lot of the concepts are the same. Uh, so a lot of what you'll learn will transfer to doing uh, analysis on Apple iOS applications. Um, the runtime environment is considerably different um, because they're not even based on the same um, hardware or operating system. So you know, diving into the iOS platform definitely will help you to have the background on Android that we're looking at today. Um, but uh, the iOS platform uh, will be very different and there will be a decent sized learning curve to get into that. And the other thing is that, uh, honestly, about I think 75% of the mobile market is Android, um, not to mention a whole bunch of the other you know, embedded systems out there that are based on Android but aren't mobile phones. So um, because of that reason, the landscape of Android is uh, the de facto standard uh, in the mobile space, just as uh, Windows tends to be in the, um, you know, uh, on the in the PC space. So the first tool that we'll look at is, um, is APK tool. Uh, and I'm going to start uh, this exercise by first unzipping, excuse me, first unzipping the, um, you know, the APK file that we're going to look at. So I'm going to go to 
it's right here. So I built a uh, app, uh, a very simple app. It was actually one I pulled um, off of the demo applications um, that are hosted on the Android GitHub. So definitely if you're interested in those um, and exploring the different features that are in different apps, there's a lot of um, application source code uh, projects on Android's GitHub site, and they implement all sorts of different features uh, that are available on the Android OS uh, in these little discrete applications. So they're really good to and helpful to look at. So I'm going to look at the um, I'm going to look at the contents of this, and you'll see that uh, there's an Android Manifest.xml. Um, there's all of these version files that I had mentioned earlier. Here's the classes.dex and un unpacked. It's about three and a half megabytes. You can see there's these um, properties files that were in here as well for some reason. Um, and then in the resource file, there's a bunch of different XML objects and you know a whole bunch of other uh, assets as well. So there's some PNG files, stuff like that. So basically a lot of the static content that doesn't actually execute code, uh, that's what's living in the, uh, in the res folder. So we'll go down to the end here and you can see it goes all the way down and then there's the resources.arsc, which is about 487k. So uh, I'm going to start by um, just straight unzipping it uh, so we can look at the files, um, you know, so we can look at the files as they're distributed. So did a 7-zip extract. So this file, Android Manifest.xml. I can look at that. And so what you'll, what you'll run into is that, uh, the Android XML files are, um, built out of this, um, odd binary format, um, mainly for, uh, efficiency, right? So that they can compress a lot easier and also so that they can take up a lot less space on disk and be a lot easier to navigate, uh, from the system. So, if I do this, I can hex dump it. You can actually probably get a better view of the contents. Um, but what you can see is, you know, there's some text in here, um, but it's interspersed with uh, binary data as well. Um, in addition to that, there's a whole bunch of binary data up here that I really can't make heads or tails of myself. Um, one of the nice things um, that APK tool does is it'll do, it'll try to do a very similar operation to what I just did, um, except it will uh, actually identify these different native file types that are part of the Android system, and it'll unpack those, or it'll uh, decode those uh, into something that's a lot more uh, manageable from a traditional format. So likewise, you know, this is some data that's not recognized as anything and then this says Dalvik dex file version uh, 035 and then we can look at this one just to see what the contents are you can see the dex file format marker it's up at the top followed by a new line followed by the version number that you just saw 0.35 so that's how it's recognized in the DEX file format, but other than that, it's a um, very specific file format to the Android operating system. And as you can see here, um, I can't really read anything out of the file myself. So unpacking the file just using zip um, isn't as beneficial here as it would be um, if we were looking at a jar. Uh, so that's where the tool, the APK tool comes into play. So can look at that. Oops. There we go. So uh, APK tool 
uh, allows you to run it in these various different modes. So there's a decode. Um, there's also a build mode. So one of the nice things I can do with APK if I wanted to is I could uh, decode the file into a folder or the I could decode the application the APK file into a folder and then I could um, modify something in there perhaps uh, and then I could rebundle it back into a new APK. So um, that can be potentially helpful if I want to modify something that I don't have the source code for um, so that then I could bundle it back into an APK and load it up on a um, to Android emulator or upload it to a, um, a tool like Anubis or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to decode this um, and I'm going to put it into a new um, output folder as well. So I'm going to do APK tool decode and then I'm going to do dash out um, and I'm going to say app release APK tool just like that. Whoops. So what I forgot to do was I forgot to provide the APK file in the command line. So there it goes. Um, it'll walk through all of the steps. You can see that this, it's decoding that binary data that we saw in the um, XML. Down here, it's um, opening up the classes.dex. Um, so one of the things that APK tool will do as well is it will uh, use this uh, back smailing. Um, so uh, the smaily format, uh, S, or I'll just highlight it here, S-M-A-L-I, um, that's a uh, disassembly format that um, it's a semi-decompiled, semi-disassembled um, source code format. Uh, that's used for representing the um, binary code, um, or I should say the executable code within a Dalvik uh, or uh, Android runtime uh, program. So what APK tool does is it uses that uh, to actually extract the content out of the classes.dex into some source files uh, for you to have and be able to analyze by hand as well. So we can look at those. So if I wanted to go to um, app release APK tool, uh, you can see that compared to the um, compared to the unpacked here, um, I have a much different file structure. So what it's done is it has put um, a lot of the original files into this original folder, um, and then it has unpacked the uh, or decoded the resources uh, into this folder. Um, it has uh, disassembled the classes into this smelly folder. And then any additional files that it didn't really have anything specific to, that it could do anything with go into the unknown over here. Uh, so for instance, you'll find all those property files that used to be in the root of the zip file. They're over here in the unknown section now. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is that this Android manifest that's in the APK tool output is a different size than this one here. So the Android manifest um, ends up providing the documentation for uh, the application uh, to the Android OS. So uh, it tells the Android OS what APIs does this thing want to use? What versions of the Android OS um, is it compatible with? Uh, what features does it want to use? What classes does it have? How do I set up the execution environment for it? Um, all of those types of things. So looking here, uh, we can see that um, this is the initial um, XML tag. Um, but over here is the manifest tag. Uh, that's basically the um, top level document tag here says that um, the SDK version used to compile this is uh, 28. Um, <clears throat> and then the SDK version code name is 9. Um, so if you're familiar with, um, with Android SDK, um, 
and uh, Android tracks the SDK version numbers um, along one set of version numbers. Um, and then there's a separate Android OS version number uh, that various SDKs um, can, uh, or I should say, were natively designed to target, right? So in this case, um, Android version 9 is the one right here. Um, it tells the package name. So it says that uh, this right here um, is the package. So that's the main package of the application. It's saying that this folder is where you're going to find the application files. Um, so the application itself was called geofencing. Um, and then here's kind of a repeat, you know, just using different attribute names um, for these Android tags. So down here, you've got what permissions that it's saying that it's going to use. So if you've ever installed an application on your phone and you run it for the first time, um, very often if it's an application that is going to interact with like the camera on your phone or um, it wants to interact with the con uh, contacts on your phone, like for instance Signal when you want to um, download contacts or something like that, um, it'll usually pop up a menu that says, or not a menu, but a dialogue that says um, what uh, do you grant it permission to do these, you know, to do this? Do you grant it permission to use the camera? Do you grant it permission to use the location services? Do you grant it permission to read your contacts? Do you grant it permission to, you know, have access to your SMS messages? Things like that. So in this case, um, this is saying that it wants access to the uh, fine location services. So the fine grained location services. Um, wants access to the wake lock, so the um, wake lock service, wants access to, uh, wants the permission to access the network state, so get the idea as to whether or not it is on or off the network, and it wants access to use the internet, so it wants access to communicate over the internet. Uh, so you'll have to grant it permission to do any of those things. Um, well, based upon the policy of your phone. Um, in some cases, there might just, so for instance, internet, right? Um, there might just be an implicit permission um, that's set in your phone settings to allow that with uh, silently. So, but that's all there um, because different phones uh, can have different access control um, you know, rights and uh, permission settings. So then the... Next thing that it may uh, that may have here is it talks about the uh, it talks about the activity. So this thing tells us that the main activity, or the activity, uh, which is basically kind of like your you know, what's the main class of your program. Um, we'll get into probably in the next lecture a little bit about how Android programs are structured, but um, they're based on a language that's object oriented. So you end up building main classes, uh, very similar to what you have to do in Java. Uh, and then within those main classes, you have specific functions uh, that are supposed to run on startup. So in this case, this is telling it that the um, underneath that package that we saw earlier up here, there's a class called main activity, which is right there. And that main activity class is basically going to be the program class, the program main class for the application. Then down here, uh, it defines a receiver. Um, so right here, it defines a uh, receiver, geofence broadcast receiver, um, that allows it to receive um, broadcast signals, so uh, broadcast events. So um, this is useful for event-driven programming. Um, oftentimes, if you want your application to receive a uh, notification while it is, um, while it's in the background or something like that. So while it's not the, you know, while it's not the application that's on the front of your phone. Additionally, there's a service defined. Um, you can see Geofence transi Transitions Job Intent Service. Um, it's asking for permission for binding job service. So it's asking for a specific permission right there as well to set up that service. Um, and then it also defines this um, uh, Google API activity um, as well. 
So um, has all of these things, and then also has like a, a uses library. So if it uses a library that's um, that's external but part of the core uh, system, uh, that's also available right here. Or it may have to be pulled down uh, from the repository. So this is a rather small Android uh, manifest um, XML, but um, you know it gives a a lengthy description of how this program is expected to operate within the Android OS um, and what the Android OS should do to start it up. So the next thing we'll go into is the uh, well the next thing we'll go into is the APK tool.yml. So this is not part of the APK file. Uh, this is actually a <clears throat> a descriptor file uh, that was generated by APK tool. Uh, so APK tool does some analysis of the file um, to generate this output. Uh, and this is also used in uh, reconstructing uh, the archive if you want to use the, the build feature of APK tool. So you can see that um, down here we have uh, SDK information, so it tells us that the uh, target SDK version, so the one that was built, was uh, 28, but um, it actually supports all the way down to 16. So, um, so this thing should run on any Android OS that's supported by those different Android SDKs. Um, it has a number of other things in here as well, including is this a framework APK, where no it's not, it's an application. Um, so that's the apk tool dot, uh, y, uh, yml. So now the Smealy code. Um, this one it might actually be easier if I um, look at that Android manifest.xml and I try and see that um, where's the package uh, where the geofencing application was located and it's com google android gms location sample geofencing. So I want to do com android or com google android sample or gms. And then in here it was location. And so now you can see there's a bunch of the Smealy files that have been extracted right here. Um, so the geofencing app is right here. So this is all the Smiley code that was generated from uh, extracting the geofencing app. Uh, so just like um, just like Java, if you remember, um, when you have a class and then it has subclasses within it, like this. They'll get these dedicated files where they use the dollar sign um, to delimit the, um, you know, the parent class or parent scope name from the uh, subclass. So um, what we had learned was that uh, main activity ends up being the, you know, the main activity, right? So we can open that up and we can look at it. And so uh, there's a lot of data that's uh, located in here, but what you can see is like, here's the constructor. Um, so the way the Smiley code um, lists stuff out is it um, basically does a dot method um, and then it does a dot end method. Uh, and then uh, this right here is the, is the uh, disassembled code. So uh, what it starts with is uh, executing this instruction here um, to construct a class instance, I suppose. Um, this first argument v0 ends up being the this pointer in Java, right? Um, so basically it's going to construct the class um, right here. So it's going to set up memory for it. Um, invoke virtual. So it wants to get the simple name. Um, and then move result object. So it has um, uh, all these different um, operations. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of these are similar to the ones that we saw in the Java disassembly. 
Um, but they're not exactly the same. So they're kind of the same, but different. Um, the, uh, and that, that's an important, um, that's an important distinction. See, um, the, uh, Dalvik and DEX, um, or I should say the Android runtime, uh, the ART code, uh, which is derived from Dalvik and Dalvik itself is derived from Java, um, is set up in a way so that it'll be compatible with Java. Um, while also having a large number of optimizations added to it that really help in the mobile space um, that just J Java out of the box doesn't offer. Um, and one of those is a slightly different bytecode. Um, and I'm not going to go into all the differences um, between the bytecode, but it's very similar if you were to look at this side by side with Java. <clears throat> Yeah, and then here, here's a longer one right here. So you can see, you know, we still have the, um, you know, invoke calls and uh, move result objects and stuff like that, right? You can even see the, uh, the reference to a string here, that string that is the access find location string. So inside the uh, check permission function. So this is interesting and, um, you know, and can be somewhat helpful. Um, but I'll go back over here. I've got a lot of this stuff uh, documented out here as well. So for instance, there's where all the permissions are documented. Um, and then I, if I wanted to, I could um, do the, uh, I could rebuild it as well. So, um, one of the things that's, uh, kind of compl or, yeah, that's kind of complicated about this is that, um, I can only really look at it, uh, from the point of view of analyzing the Smiley code. Um, it's not something that I'm super familiar with, um, but I do know that, um, there's a translation that exists between, um, Dalvik and Java because when you're authoring a lot of these applications in Android Studio, you're going to be writing the code in the Java programming language already anyways. Um, and then under the hood, there's something that compiles the Java and then translates the compiled Java into these um, uh, Dalvik executables. So what I'm going to do next is go back here. And the next thing that I'm going to use is this dex to jar now this comes um, this comes bundled on the Kali image uh, that I put together for you all as uh, D2J dash dex to jar. Um, so it's actually a huge package of um, of different programs here. Um, the one I'm going to focus on is just the standard original dex to jar one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, I'm going to have it uh, write a new jar file uh, based upon the APK file. So what I'll do is I'll do dex to jar dash output. Um, I'll just say app release converted dot jar. And then I'll give it app release.apk. So what it's going to do is it's going to walk through that APK file. This might take a little bit, um, or not. It'll walk through that APK file and it'll go through all the different classes and all the different resources and everything that's in there. And it'll try to create a jar file that contains, uh, at least all the classes. So this is my new one. So there we go. So what it did was it went in there and yeah, it only, um, it only pulled out the, uh, yeah, it only pulled out the, um, you notice there are no res files. Um, yep, there are no res files. So it only pulled out the classes. 
so what I might want to do is then I might want to make a jar unpacked folder like this. Right, and then I'm going to extract apk release converted.jar. And then this is going to do the same thing. So if I do com Google Android lo GMS location sample and then geofencing, I can get to the main package. And so then I can use JAD, right? So I can use JAD on the main main activity dot class. And as you can see, it gives me a few warnings, it tells me that this class version is 50. Um, so, you know, Java, has uh, versions of the, you know, versions of the class file format. Um, this thing's telling me that, whoops, I'll do that again. Oops. This thing's telling me that uh, only 45, you know, only these three versions are actually supported. Uh, so, but it still created the file. So I created the file, and you can see that the file is right here. Um, the file may, there may be some code that it was not able to reverse. Um, so you can take a look at it and see. Um, I've found that a lot of times it can be easier for me just so I can have the syntax highlighting to just move, uh, copy the file to a Java file like that. And now I get the benefit of the syntax highlighting. So, so this gives me a much better structure. I'm not looking at all the functions uh, flattened out into one kind of top level uh, function list. Uh, instead, I'm actually getting some of the class structure here and I can uh, really start to analyze this with an eye on you know, the contextual relationship between things. So here's the constructor, um, that short constructor we were looking at. This thing, um, this add geofences has something that's, um, you know, if it can't check permit, if it checks permissions and they fail, then it shows snack bar. Um, otherwise, it adds geofences using the M geofencing client. Um, check permissions. So, um, you know, it's going to check that it can use the location services, and if not, um, it's going to return false. So we can look through here, we can get a good, really good idea, just by reading the source code, of uh, what, this, uh, what this program does, right? So this one is pretty straightforward, um, you know. And then uh, what I can do So I can go all the way back down here, um, and if you're familiar with the find command, I can do this. So find um, all uh, entities within this directory structure of type F, and then whose name ends with um, class, right? So I can do this, and I can find that um, there's a list of the class files here uh, that are in the folder. Um, if I wanted to, I can pass them to JAD with the, you know, dash R option, which we looked at before, which preserves the um, in-place directory structure. So it will write the JAD file. Uh, into the same subfolder that the class file resides in. So, and then it ran through all of them. 
Um, so then I can look for star.jad, and I can see them all here, right? So if I wanted to, I could go and open this one up. And I can see all the contents that it has. It's not really a whole lot, but, you know, uh, that's what I could do. So, um, you know, what you've learned is that I can use the AP key tool uh, to get a lot of insight about the application. Um, I, I can get a whole bunch of insight about the metadata. Um, it will unwind a lot of the uh, packed resources and packed classes. Um, it'll generate the smally code for me if I want. Um, unfortunately, um, I and you know probably many of you are not going to be familiar with reading that. Um, so it can be a lot helpful or a lot more helpful in this case to use um, the APK tool to pull apart the metadata um, and the parameters of the um, APK file, uh, while at the same time using this um, uh, D to J dex to jar program to convert the classes.dex into a directory structure of uh, Java classes. Um, and then we can attack those Java classes with the same analytical tools uh, that we looked at during the Java lecture last week. So um, that's all for this lecture. So thank you very much, uh, and I hope you enjoy.